how much we now your you. mic is the effed up one for sure well that's okay take your hand away from me <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, watch the damn episode <laughs> Hello, beautiful people. My name is Davi. I'm joined by Abe and Charlie. Welcome back to another Redox Reaction, aka Tony Tuesday. That <laughs> was a really bad impression, but Tony Tuesdays. I mean, you guys are dressed <laughs> the part. Was bad? No, mine was. Uh, I mine was We're good. all dressed no, yeah. in the part. I feel like yeah. a dawn. You know, no way. A little camp collar, a little gold jewelry. <laughs> it's like a little two chess hairs. Oh, yeah, you got it. Popping out, yeah, you know? Right here, yeah, come this on. Is, you gotta... This is not Tony Soprano. Like, he's got definitely, like, a forest in here. <laughs> yeah, he does. Uh, well, for our viewers and listeners, we hope you guys are doing well. Um, just some quick updates. Uh, just, just a heads up. This episode is available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. The discussion portion you'll be able to listen to. So if you're on a commute and you want to listen to our discussion portion, hit the link in the description, and it's available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And Charlie and Ava, how y'all doing? We're great. We good. We're great. I spent uh, the night. Well, we went to the Ed Sheeran concert last night. Nice. Which was fun. Yeah. It was good. It was a blast. Yeah. And then I came home and I spent uh, some hours editing the latest Barry episode. I hope you guys watched that because I stayed Thanks. up till 3 a.m. editing it. Yeah. And we started yeah. combining our Barry episodes into two now, two episodes per mm -hmm. upload. Um, I think someone at one point had said, someone had asked why don't they do two and someone had said oh charlie doesn't want to edit all, all like that doesn't want to do that much editing listen we all have full-time jobs and editing is a big big amount of work so yeah it's not that charlie doesn't want to there's only so much he can do <laughs> <laughs> true um, yeah true so just as a, a clarifying note but we're you know we're trying to get through as much as possible because we know you all like the video so um as much as we can pump these out we will do so and as much as charlie is willing to it's, it's to the edit. king it's the king of editing he's insane at it indeed um but from episode three abe can you read some comments you didn't ask how ruby was oh my gosh i'm so sorry can you believe he neglected you like that yeah it's crazy wow crazy if you guys could notice our special guest is here Probably back by popular demand. People love Ruby. So no, but she only comes in when we're watching The Sopranos. She, she doesn't. Knows, it, she doesn't come in for Barry when what, we're doing Barry. Is what you were saying. She knows that Tony is sensitive towards yeah. animals, and you know he he has an appreciation for life, so she gets it. <laughs> what is this? Is this comfortable for you? Very much so. She loves okay. the new pillow edition. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so. Cool. All right. I'll read a couple comments here. Um, <laughs> the top one here comes from uh, Vitor da Silva Seven. What a weird name. Um, kidding. That's my that's my buddy. Remember watching this episode last night? The food fight scene at uh, fourteen thirty two is another glimpse into Tony's humanity. Nick Gomez and Mark uh, Serenseni do a great job catching their jovial food fight while also catching Carmela's happiness to see her husband having fun. Yeah, I thought that was a good scene. It, it felt a little different than we than we usually see Tony because he mm -hmm. was like almost being a little serious towards Artie in yeah. the scene, and then all of a sudden he just like th starts throwing food at him, and you're like confused at first, but. You realize he's just having fun with one of his mm -hmm. buddies. Like he's just, mm -hmm. just a regular guy. They're acting like yeah. kids. Yeah, they're acting like kids. Exactly. So that that was that was cool to, to see. We also have Arsolan six one eight with this comment. Charmaine was basically telling Carmela, "I could have had your life." She's saying Tony could have chosen her over Carmela, and it was Char Charmaine's choice not to go that route. So don't worry about me. Really cold way of getting back for that servant treatment that Carmela mm. gave her. So I think we talked about how, you know, Charmaine was saying, oh, I, you know, me and Tony, we had something, whatever. It wasn't for me, basically. Yeah, I think that comment's spot on. Like, she didn't, she she was she was basically saying, like, I could have been you if I wanted to. Like, don't treat me like I'm less than. Like, I could have had what you're having right now. Um, and that was a really big dynamic that we saw um, in that last episode. So it's yeah. interesting. And that was actually episode three, not, not, not episode four. Not to be confused, sorry. Last comment here from Wingo Wilson 2. Man, The Sopranos is starting to get a lot of reactions that are actually worth listening to. Great discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wingo Wilson. Um, yeah, thank you for the people who put us onto this because we knew about The Sopranos before, but I just think we didn't, you know, we didn't have any motivation to really watch it until people that were watching our succession videos really like suggested us watching it. And that's what, um, you know, this community is kind of what incentivized us to do that. So. Uh, I'm glad that we're able to watch it and talk to you all about it. Um, and the things that we don't catch, y'all let us know in the comments. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. Best of both worlds. Yes, and if you're new here, please consider subscribing. 
to our channel and we appreciate the love and support we've gotten so far it's been incredible journey so far and yeah we're having a lot of fun we're having a lot of fun facts and ruby loves it too yeah don't look so <laughs> <Ruby. laughs> <laughs> all right but with that being said y'all charlie hit play okay so it's up, uh, episode five college Co oh okay so meadows what visiting schools right because she's in high school i'm assuming yeah. yeah how'd it go we got a 48 to 52 male female ratio which is great usual programs abroad are china india you're just applying here already you're leaving what are you studying in india how not to get diarrhea <laughs> <laughs> this one girl told me there's a saying bates is the world's most expensive form of contraception oh bates. oh you mean the girls at the other colleges we've been to they just put out oh my god that's a really good school, isn't it? It is. It's a really rich school, too. Mm. Dad, how come you didn't finish college? Well, Mom and Grandpa didn't stress college. They were working class people. How come your parents were anti-education? They weren't anti. I got into a little trouble when I was a kid. Are you in the mafia? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. Organized crime. That's total crap. Who told you that? Dad, I've lived in the house all my life. I've seen police come with warrants. I've seen you going out at 3 in the morning. Did the Cusimano kids ever find $50,000 in Krugerrands and a 45 automatic while they were hunting for Easter eggs? <laughs> so everybody immediately assumes you're mobbed up. It's a stereotype, and it's offensive. But is it true, Tony? She knows the BS. So she was telling her brother that about the her dad being in the mafia without actually Confirming, talking about yeah, it. with him. Gotcha. There is no mafia. He just said there is no mafia. Obviously, he's going to have to tell her. Some of my money comes from illegal gambling and, and, and whatnot. Oh, my. Mm. At least you don't keep denying it like mom. So many dads are full of shit. And I'm not. Finally told the truth about this? <laughs> Part of my income comes from legitimate businesses. You know, stock market. I... Look, dad, please, okay? Don't start mealy mouthing. No, that's my cousin, Svetlana. The amputee? Two months, she's only in America. And she's already getting married. Hey, you knew that. Oh. Wait, so we talked about this. Yes, a new wife, whenever you want. How the world pulls Jess? I get a man right? Don't throw up in my face things you buy me, okay? A prosthetic leg fell off in a gap store. And he. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god. So his mistress is down bad. That's crazy. Jesus. Get out, Tony. Yeah, he's going to cut the relationship. Uh, I don't think he is. <laughs> you don't think he is? No. Why don't you say he can just find another one? I think he probably likes to chase. Anything to get her off of this Berkeley kick. Oh, is he hearing ducks? Is that what? Yeah. No, it's oh. the guy. Exactly. Or the guy. What the heck? It was weird because I saw the guy, but I also heard that sound. I thought it was ducks. I don't know why. Definitely not ducks. <laughs> Do we know this guy? Let off. Come on. Uh-oh. Come on, get in. Okay, okay, what's the rush? What's going on? I think I saw an old friend, that's all. You know that guy at the gas station? Probably not. Then what? Uh-oh. Dad, slow Ooh. down! What's going on? Just fooling around. <laughs> what? Kobe, turn left, it's to the left! Left! Dad! See, that's because you're talking to me so much. Oh, jeez. Hey, this gets us to our Kobe anyhow. Dad, that's our motel. Hello, our motel's right there. Like he's blacking out, no? Did you know that guy? Nah, wasn't it? Yikes. Hmm. What was that? <laughs> what? That was interesting. Bada bing. Take this number down and call me back. Bada bing. 185. That's right. Write it on the chicks. Oh my gosh, the orange account. juice is absolutely spilling all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, look who's carrying it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you bring her orange juice and one hard-boiled egg? What? You said poached eggs. Poached egg. You're not going to eat them now. After all that work. My eyes were bigger than my stomach. Anthony, why don't you go over to Jason's? Play Nintendo. Nope. Whoa, 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 whoa. No kisses. Cooties. I'll be back in like an hour. Jeez. <laughs> oh, I get it now. Yeah. Because he has to go to a payphone. I'm not sure, but I think I just saw Fabian Petrullio. Refresh my memory. What's he before your time? Big guy. He flipped about 10 years ago and he got busted for peddling H. That took out a lot of people. A lot of people from our outfit. My old man was sick. He never recovered when he heard the news. Went into the witness protection program, then they kicked him out. Now he goes to colleges and gets paid all kinds of money to talk about what a big bad mafioso he was. Fabian and me partied a couple times, but Jackie and Prilly knew him real good. Anyway, run these plates for me. Go ahead. Bang. DX66. No, he's not going to get it. Did he write it on his hand? The water's going to wash it away. Taking a walk, sort of phone. So can I give Christopher a call? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Everything okay? Yeah. They're going <laughs> to leak in the roof, though. Is that all right? 
Who is it? Father Phil. Just a second. Oh. Father Phil, and you get ready like this? Didn't Tony accuse her of oh, yeah, something the, with the priest? With the priest, yeah. Was she faking? Was she sick? faking be sick to send her to send her son? Either that, or she just sucking it up, like pretending like she's not sick. I mean, there. she told her kid to go play Nintendo. That is true too. You're right. But the the flu that was going around. Yipes. Yeah, I still have a little fever, but. Uh... Okay, so she's still sick. I, I have a Jones for your big ZD. Oh, sure, anytime. That's so staring. Why are you doing that? It's an exciting time. I can't tell you how proud I am of you. A real student at Casa Soprano. And she looks like one of the models right out of Italian Vogue. You're definitely up to something. Oh, how'd you get so cynical? That stuff we talked about before. How's that sitting with you? Not like I wasn't 90% sure already. What about your brother? Does he know? think so. You know, there was a time, Ed, when the Italian people didn't have a lot of options. You know, I put food on the table. My father was in it. My uncle was in it. College, nothing interested you? Nah, I barely got in. Kind of liked history. Yeah? Yeah. Napoleon, the Roman Empire, Potsdam Conference, that kind of thing. Conquering. <laughs> Stuff that's <laughs> interesting to him. Dad, I have something to tell you. Yeah? We should talk about the speed. Mm -hmm. A couple of weeks ago, me and some friends, we were doing speed. We did kind of a lot of it for a while. You what? It was just between homework and SATs. We needed something to keep going. A crap will kill you. I know. It'll have slapped the shit out of you. Where did you get it? If I thought this was going to be a lecture, I never would have told you. Take a reality check. What do you think I'm going to say? <laughs> I am telling you, especially after this reaction. Well, why did you tell me? You were honest with me today. Mm. I won't be doing it again. It got too scary. I'm glad you told me, in spite of everything. I'm glad I did too. I'm glad we have that kind of relationship. This is like the closest we've seen him with any of his family members. Yeah. He's a lot closer to his daughter than he is with his son. Yeah. As well. But then it's like uh, the mom is closer to the son. It yeah. seemed like as well. And not as close to the daughter. She kind of hates her. I got something for you. That's what we were talking about. The chapter on Buddhism is spectacular. Like this Chianti though is beyond reproach. Chianti's good, bro. Word up. <laughs> Word up, Father <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Word up, fellow kids. Why don't you hang out with him? Dad. What, what better way to learn about the college? Go ahead. Okay. No men, no drinking. Girls, you see that she sticks to cokes. Oh, he's going after his friend. Yeah. yeah. Yo, what do you got? Wet shoes. Hey, you chose this life. You don't want to work in a rain try for the f***ing Yankees. <laughs> it's the Frederick Peters. 38 Washington Street, Waterville, Maine. It's off Route 201. I looked it up. Frederick Peters. Fabian Petrullio. Good match, huh? I guess. I don't know. They had a friend, Jimmy, die in prison on account of this scumbag. All right, I'll let him know. Do my homework and positively ID this guy. I thought you said it was him. I haven't seen him in 12 years. I don't know. I gotta make sure. So this guy was a rat. He's so only trying to mm -hmm. kill the rat, kill them all. You think I'm a schnorer, don't you? Schnorer? A Yiddish. And somebody who always shows up in time for free grub. For a moocher. You're a man. You like to eat. Where is this going? I'm so... Uh, yeah. Hello? Hello. I'm calling for Tony Soprano. Oh. This is Dr. Melfi, his nurse. Is this Mrs. Soprano? Uh, that's right. And you are again? Jennifer Melfi, Dr. Melfi. Jennifer. Lovely name. No, he's not home. Could I impose on you to, uh, to tell him that I need to reschedule Monday's appointment? I'm down with the flu. Does he have your number, Jennifer? Let me give it to you just in case. I lost my pencil. Up his ass. <laughs> All right, she's gonna think he's cheating. No, but he, he told, told her. No, but he told her that it's oh, a guy. Oh, yeah, I forgot man. about that. Why wouldn't he tell me his therapist is a woman unless he's screwing her? Yeah, see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I'm sure you're wrong about them. Therapy is a start. It's a good start, but yes, it, it doesn't fix the soul. <laughs> it's full <of> air bubbles. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. Dad is gonna come too, sweetie. We'll both be eating back. He's gonna strangle this guy or drown him in, in that hot tub. I don't think he's gonna do it. I think he's just gonna let him be. Think so? I think he's trying to make sure it's the right guy. Yeah. Maybe he's tailing him still. Oh, freaking hell. Good thing we're wearing headphones. We'd be going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> right now, she's just sleeping under the table right here. <laughs> he's suspicious. <laughs> Good as Willem Dafoe was, I cannot picture that Jesus looked like him. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he played Jesus in something a while back, right? really. 
Yes, I believe so. It's the temptation. The of, last temptation of yeah. Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he mm -hmm. played Jesus in it, and it was directed by Martin Scorsese. Never seen that one. Same. I haven't seen it. Christ was saying that we're all well, that whores will go to heaven before a lot of the righteous. Uh huh. Well, that's not right. Let's face it, Father. We got some major contradictions here. It's about love. Think about it like that. What does that mean? It means hopefully someday we will learn to tolerate, accept, and forgive those that are different. Change through love. A lot of love talk from a father, you know. <laughs> Seems like you might got some ulterior motives, my friend. I better get going. Where are you going? You just got here. Oh, I'm. It's getting late. Well, it's pouring rain out. Well, I know you love that DVD player. Hmm. See, do I know you? Anything with Emma Thompson, I'm there. Father Phil, I didn't know you looked. And to take in through the eyes a beautiful woman? That's so different than a sunset. But isn't he not supposed to have a relationship? Correct. He's just talking about. Yeah. Right now, he's just talking about l looking at a woman. Right. That's what she was asking about. But no, he's, yeah, priests are not supposed to. But all, the, yeah, that's what I'm saying. All the comments he's making almost seems like he wants to spark something up mm -hmm. with, with her. And he's right. He's not right. supposed to. I'm really digging the dark and moody shots with, uh, with Tony in this episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The whole episode's kind of dark and moody. Yeah. Yeah. Rain. The contrast with, with the rain. The, with yeah. The cigar. Mm -hmm. Just looking like a mafia boss, you know? It's funny because it started out so bright. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, oh, I'm in college, whatever. Now here we are. Listen, Tank, anybody been looking for me or asking any questions about me? Is there a problem? No. Oh, no. Dipshit hit me with his boat while I was tubing on Caribou Lake. <laughs> so is him. Notice that camera angle again. The Dutch, the tilt. Yeah, it was yeah. a slight one. Yep. Oh, no. no drinking. There she oh, is. shoot. <laughs> oh, this is going to be bad, huh? This guy just walked into the same bar as his daughter. Oh, this, it just feels like it's a horror movie. Right. Look at these shots, bro. Tony's smarter than to ask around for pe for somebody, you know? Mm -hmm. There's people he doesn't know. Hello, Red. Oh, he probably recognizes something. Like the bust is probably something he, he knows. Let's go into the, to the motel. Why is he tailing this this lady? I don't, I don't get it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, I see. He got the list of people staying. Let me see it. It's the goat Anthony Hopkins. Mm -hmm. Looks so young. I turn into a freaking handle it. What is it? Yo, father, I'm a terrible person. Oh, no. You're a wonderful woman. <laughs> been building in me. I need to get it out. Carmela, if I can help. I bet, I bet you want to help. How long has it been since you last confessed? If you like, I can do this with you. It's so weird. I wonder if the conf he's trying to pull a confession out of her of like, I'm attracted to you, I'm um, uh -huh. whatever. And then, mm -hmm. I mean, look at the way he looks at her. You oh, can yeah. tell. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. I have forsaken what is right for what is easy. Allowing what I know is evil in my house. Allowing my children oh my god my sweet children to be a part of it because i wanted things for them I wanted a better life good schools i wanted this house I wanted money in my hands i didn't know she had this internal conflict i'm so ashamed it's just a matter of time before god compensates me with outrage for my sins uh oh all right come on oh, i knew it she yeah she was getting drunk mm -hmm. at the freaking bar the kilo bread Sorry, Dad. Oh, God. Everything is spinning. Oh, my God. You're not mad, are you, Daddy? A little bit. I gave them to you. <laughs> Supposed to be. Dad. Witnesses. You have witnesses. You must truly repent, genuinely and honestly. And in the future, you must renounce all these actions. And then God will absolve you. I don't know, Father. I'll try. But I still love him. I still believe he can be a good man. I think you should take communion. Why do you have that with you? Unfortunately, I had to say mass for someone in intensive care. Oh, bro. He's going to roofie her. There's no way. I, what? No. I, that's not what I was thinking. You don't think so? What are you thinking? I don't know. He's just carrying around communion stuff with him <laughs> instead of using the wine that they already have. Well, there's a specific type of wine for communion. Oh. I didn't know that. Yeah, and there's the... We used to just have grape juice. Oh! Hey, bro, listen, I went to Catholic. What'd I say? What was that? He just dripped something in there. I don't, I don't know. So, I, we're not Catholic. I, I don't know. He, he... There's something odd. I'm telling you. Yeah, see? This is... 
This is the blood of Christ that was shed for you. Yeah, he's also yeah, yeah. Like that. No, there was nothing in that. He dripped something in it, dude. I, I just think it was probably like holy water. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was. No, I don't. I don't know. You tell us. You went to a Catholic high school. Yeah. I ain't never seen that. I didn't take. <laughs> I didn't take Catholic communion though. Yeah. I booked the seat on a Boston flight tomorrow, four o'clock. Don't come. Gods don't come. I'll make sure you and Meadow clear the state before anything happens. This is my thing. I am your soldier, Antonio. This is my duty, like we're always talking about. This is my call. I gotta vouch for this myself. You stay put. End the discussion. Why are you using the payphone again? It's more than like paper. I don't want to wake you up. Dad, please don't lie to me. Come on. Let's go back to bed. I'm down there. Let me throw up. <laughs> um, something <laughs> this, happened, this bro. Is like... Something happened. I'm so oh, I'm, I'm trying, trying to understand what's going on. This car thing's a bit yeah. undone. Yeah. Oh, hi, honey. Oh, yeah, was it fun? You want to sleep over there? Mm. Oh, boy. It's a lot of buildup for just having I sex know. with the priest. I know. <laughs> We both know why you're here. Both of you. Yeah, his it's shirt a is undone. Very I feel like they already well done did some build up though. Like just the tension is it's like you know it's coming, but you don't know when. Say Jay, he's sleeping over. I see. No. At a, a friend's house. Oh. I think he put some like absinthe or something or like some some really strong alcohol. I, oh, he's about to puke. He drank the most of it, so I don't know. Are you all right? <laughs> but why would he? Why would he do that? So confused. Oh. Oh my god, oh. bro. Oh, not a good of idea. The, of, of any of the not days a good idea. That, He's not sleeping. Of right. any of the days to call a line and hang up without saying anything after hearing his voice. Right. Like he now he's paranoid as hell. He's already paranoid. Oh, that's a dope shot. Uh, the handheld zoom. Yeah. Focus. It feels like you're watching on binoculars or something. I don't know. It's like super. Like a stakeout. Yeah. Stop and get a beer. Hello? See? Yeah, that's why. Mm -hmm. Why does he have a main license plate though? Probably rented a car. That's not his car. I feel like we've seen him drive that around a bit. I don't know. No, I don't know. All right, I'll pick you up in a little while. Do not come dead. Aren't you coming in? No, I left my watch at the motel. <laughs> Grab me a student paper. <laughs> <laughs> Start speeding where it's Grand Theft Auto. What is happening here? Uh, I, don't, I don't know where this is going. <laughs> Every time I'm like, this is what's going to happen. Nope, it just wrong. Last night, we didn't do anything out of line. There's nothing to apologize about. Anthony Jr. will be home soon. Oh my God, my car's been out there all night in plain sight. We didn't do anything wrong, we didn't do anything wrong. Is there a commandment against eating ziti? I'm home! <laughs> Ouch. Oh. I don't know where to begin. It's not that I don't have desire for you in my heart. My own father, please. You, last night, my own. Difficult test from God ever for me. What are you talking about? We're friends. Of all the Fanuc priests in the world, why did I have to get the one who's straight? Mella. <laughs> Come on, it's a joke. That's a strange relationship. A dynamic, I mean. He's very, so it seems like he's very tempted mm -hmm. to have something with her, like some sort of relationship. But they but hang he, out, he they watch anything. movies. Because yeah. she said last week we watched Casablanca. Right. He never acts on it seems you pick him up on the colby campus stay on him. where we're on the colby campus the fucking admissions office an hour out of town pull up alongside boom 12 gauge Fuck that lon you do what i ask so you'll never get another bag off me yeah these are some junkies he's uh, hiring idiot he's literally yeah he's stupid you can see they're like trembling when the cops to find out who burnt down the historical house you huh? fuck what It's Tony. It's gotta be. Popped. In my own head, this is like too much for him to kill him at this point. Yeah, I think they're just gonna talk. I don't see. Because there's too much going on. Like, everyone knows he's a main. He is registered at a motel where this guy lives. Like, all that. Like, I feel like there's too much evidence. It's circumstantial, obviously, but. Uh, I don't know. He's the only one who's got that info. And like he was talking to Christopher on the phone. Christopher was like, oh, if I, you know, cap this rat, I'll be set for life. Yeah, basically. He'll, be made. he'll be made. He'll be almost yeah. made. But Tony's like, nah, I got to handle this. <laughs> Bambi. I'm telling you, he's going to get popped, bro, just out of nowhere. Ooh, oh, right there. Good morning, rat. <laughs> Teddy, there must be something we could do. Tony, it's Tony, you f 
You know how much trouble you're in now? You took an oath, and you broke it. I could have killed you last night outside the motel. Daughter was drunk, remember? I was there in the parking lot. You shot me at that motel, your life would have been flushed on a piece of dude. Please, honey, I'm begging. <laughs> Jimmy says hello from hell, you f Yeah, he's gone. Oof. Oof. <laughs> That's brutal. The only problem is he's bruising his own hands and everything with it, too. But it's a silent kill. Not me thinking they were just gonna talk it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's I just thought there was too much like evidence that he's in the area. His alibi doesn't, you know what I mean? Ah, but it's only one guy tailing him. It was nothing. What do you mean? It was just this guy tailing Tony because he suspected that he was tailing him. Well, yes, but there's like motive. There's everything. Yeah. Right. So I'm saying like this kill po points directly to Tony, <laughs> mm. which might not matter. Which might no. not matter. All the ducks. Oh, shit. He's gonna have a panic attack right here. Where have you been? Uh, I went back to the motel. They didn't have the watch, so I went over to the restaurant. They was closed. The restaurant had your watch? Yeah, I took it off in the bathroom when I was washing my hands. You ready? It'll be late for boating. We're gonna have all really good scores. <laughs> it's like one of his tells when he's lying. I feel like his little smile, his little mm -hmm. side smile, you know? Yeah, she knows. Yeah, she's gonna see his hand. Look at that, yeah. yeah. His yeah, loafers all that. messed up. The restaurant tried the back door. To, there were puddles. It was dumb, I know. A little smile. This is his mm -hmm. tell, bro. Right there. She noticed. Dad, where did you go? You saw that man, didn't you? Cut it on the screen door. I'm an opera. What do you think happened? I don't know. You got in a fight? You don't know. You're making a big deal out of this and you don't know. You were on the payphone again last night at one o'clock in the morning. Excuse me, Miss Cuervo, an a hole. <laughs> you can't be. <laughs> <laughs> not him gaslighting her. <laughs> I warned you not to drink. You're being honest with me, right? Pretty soon here, you're going to start hurting my feelings. Dad. What? She knows. Yeah. Mm. The trust I is broken. You. Oh. I love you too. Ooh. What a quote. No, well, here they are, the two Ivy Leaguers. Any cold past? Ah, uh, there was some ziti, but it all got eaten. Any cold past? The whole tray from last Sunday? Monsignor Jughead was here. Ugh, he knows. Yes, he was. He spent the night here. Yeah, right. Okay. The priest spent the night here. What happened? Nothing. Where was Anthony? He's uh, sleeping over at Jason's. The priest spent the night here. Nothing happened. And you're telling me this because... You might hear something. Take it the wrong way. His car was out front all night. This is too fucked up for me even to think about. What'd you guys do for 12 hours? Play, uh, name that pope? <laughs> <laughs> Give me communion. Oh, I bet he gave you communion. <laughs> he spends the night here with you. And all he does is slip you a wafer? Verging on sacrilege. Oh, I didn't mean the verge. Would I have told you about it voluntarily if there had been anything to be ashamed of? Do I look like the friggin' thorn bird over here? He's a f That's it. Because otherwise, I gotta question what I'm hearing here. Oh, Tony, you are a sketch. Oh, by the way, your therapist called. Jennifer? Mm, mm, mm. Tom. Yo. I just thought you'd think it was weird if I saw a woman psychiatrist. That's all. Oh, come on. It's just therapy. That's all. We just talk. <laughs> the duality there. Yeah. She's being honest with him. He's being honest with her. Another one. Neither, neither, neither of them like it. Yeah, neither of them thinks they're actually being honest. Oh, right. wow. What a dynamic. What a contrast this episode was. Was there any similarities that you guys were thinking of while Tony and Meadow were uh, out visiting schools and that whole situation? And versus what Carmela was doing at home. Did you guys find any similarities or a difference in the significance of that? Yeah, I think both um, relationships are kind of like this pure thing, right? Like a father and a daughter and then you know, a woman and her priest. Like they're mm -hmm. both kind of like the purest kind of relationships you think. But on both sides, there's like a little bit of infidelity and a little bit of sense of betrayal. So I thought that was interesting. There's a little bit of parallel there because with Tony, he's like being honest with his daughter, but he's also withholding the truth a little bit. She's like trying to be honest with him, but knows that he's not completely revealing everything. And then on the flip side, you have Carmela and the priest. You can tell they both they both want each other. There like is, yeah, both, there is a tension. There's a tension. There's the attraction, whatever. Um, There's like that bit of like infidelity and just like the whole time I was watching, I was like, okay, it's gonna happen here, happen here. He's mm -hmm. gonna kiss her here. He, they're gonna have sex here. It never happened. But I just thought it was um it was cool how they formatted this episode because it was literally between the two settings. Like that was that was it. It was just Tony and his daughter. Obviously, you had Christopher you know, Colin. Christopher Colin, you had that whatever th those parts baked into what else was happening. But it was really those those two storylines that we saw the entire time. I think that was super intentional. Charlie, what stood out to you from that from that contrast and that parallel? I think the part. Um, where you guys were surprised that Meadow uh, said 
you know, that she loved her dad after he wasn't very honest to her. Yeah. I compared that immediately back to when they were first having dinner with each other and he was asking her where she got the speed from and she couldn't tell him she's like i won't tell you mm. it's a similar situation it's like she she couldn't tell him because it's gonna screw things up and he's not gonna tell her what he's doing because it's gonna screw things up in the relationship mm -hmm. right and others behind them because if he finds out that christopher is the one who gave it it's gonna cause all this problem so mm -hmm. right i think they're, they're both hiding similar things to keep that to keep the relationship, relationship going so it doesn't yeah because if they reveal certain things that's going on in the in the background, it could fall apart and they don't want to lose right. the relationship they have with each other. Bro, I don't know why I got this thought in my head when I was watching this. I was like, this episode feels like the Cold War. Like there's just so much tension, but nothing actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? yeah. Like that that's how I felt until he actually killed the rat. Mm -hmm. Um, that was the one part that I was like, okay, something actually happened. Yeah, and I didn't, I didn't think he was gonna do it. That's why I didn't think he was gonna do it because that entire episode, I was like, there's a lot of tension here for not a lot that is actually coming of it. Like the entire tension between Carmela and the priest, it felt like the entire time they were gonna do something, nothing happened. Even with Tony and his and Meadow, they were you know trying to be honest with each other, but they never really broke that barrier of like you can fully trust me. I'm gonna tell you everything, all that. Like that never actually came to fruition. Um, which I thought was really, really interesting and I thought was super intentional. I just don't know in the grand scheme of things the why. The why, okay. But I think that's still to come. Like, what? Yeah. why are they showing us this relationship between, you know, Meadow and, and Tony? And, and why why are we seeing that they can't 100% be honest? I feel like somehow that's going to come up in the story again and it's going to bite one, both of them in the ass, maybe the whole family, like because they can't be completely honest. And then you have Tony, Carmela's relationship. Like Carmela, Carmela is this conflict of like, she's so straight up, she's so whatever, but at the same time, she knows that she's been kind of a spectator and an accomplice in all of this. Like everything that's going on in her life, she's just letting Tony do these things, even though she doesn't know the details, she knows exactly what's happening. And in the same vein, like she's letting this priest stay over her house and feeding him and whining and dining him and watching movies with him. And while like she knows like, it, like it's friend, like it's it's more than that. It's more than that. It's wrong. Yeah, it's, it's, it's wrong. It's, not right. it's one thousand percent wrong. Yeah. But in the same sense, like she's got Tony has his his his, his, his affairs. His trish, so she's whatever. like, why if Tony can have one, I should have right, one too. Right, but you can tell like, with her, like she it feels hurts. she it feels hurts like her. she shouldn't. She yeah, she feels guilty when that mm -hmm. stuff happens. Tony, you, you don't see that with you his like, mistress and stuff. You don't see him really feeling guilty or regretting those actions like in the moment. Even with Carmela, you can see when she's with the priest, like she's hesitating, she's struggling, she's mm -hmm. trying to, you know, find a way out, maybe making sure that she's not doing the wrong thing. So they're, they're, very, they're very different, but it's so funny how at the end, and it was super unfortunate how at the end they came together and both of them were like kind of telling the truth and neither of them believed each other. Yeah, that's true. It's, in, it's gonna be interesting to see now going forward what Carmela is going to do with that information mm. and how she's going to take it. Cause now the priest knows, right? The priest knows that Tony is going to therapy. Right. So he can hold that on Tony now. So there's another dynamic that can happen that can, you know, come in and shake some things up. But also, um, what I think really hit me was the moment where, um, Meadow said, I love you because I obviously I do think that she loves him, but I think it was that moment. She kind of just accepted, Hey, I, can't tell you everything in my life anymore mm -hmm. after this trip i think that's what i felt after seeing this this whole outcome i feel like from there she's like okay i know what you do you're not going to tell me everything i get that but i'm not going to tell you everything about my life right i think that's how i i kind of interpreted that scene they'll have to withhold information from each other yeah right and i don't know if tony's going to be okay with it but maybe this can happen where their relationship starts to kind of drift apart i don't think it will i think the relationship will still be tight but it's going to be a dynamic that going forward is very there's moments where they're going to be it's going to be hard for tony to confront his daughter right and it's going to happen multiple times and when the confrontation happens because there is going to be a moment where something's going to build up it's going to build up and i think it's going to be really bad mm -hmm. yeah no i mean both times in this episode where someone was truthful to him he freaked out yeah his daughter told him she was taking speed he freaked out his wife said the priest stayed over he freaked out but then when it's time for him to reveal the truth, people can't freak out or else, you know, he's all upset. So I don't think he's a very good acceptor of the truth. We've seen that through therapy as well. Every time his therapist is trying to reveal a little bit of the truth to him, he gets pissed off and gets defensive. So yeah, uh, he is a person who lingers in the shadows. 
how we literally saw throughout this episode. Very moody, very dark, lingering in the shadows, following people around, and lives in a disguise of lies. I was going to bring up the quote that he saw when they were visiting. I think it was Bowden. Mm -hmm. Um, The quote was something along the lines of like, if you want to rewind it, two realities, basically. Yeah. Um, it's something about being two faced basically yeah, yeah. uh and I, I i loved that i loved that that was just like sitting there on the wall they thought it was like a perfect oh, perfect shot of what was going on let's see there it is. oh it says no man can wear one face to himself and another to the multitude without finally getting <laughs> bewildered as to which may be true hawthorne i'm assuming that's nathaniel hawthorne who i think is the writer of the scarlet letter mm -hmm. um, yes which is crazy because it's like infidelity like that's like the whole premise of it which i think is super super on the nose very very good just like symbolism in here but i think this is exactly what is happening to tony and he's been doing it for so long that he's so good at it and it's almost like coming naturally to him but i wonder well i don't wonder i think we've had this conversation i think this is what is causing his issues in therapy is he has two faces yeah and now he's struggling to see which one is the real one and which one do you think he knows what the i think he knows what the real one is but the real one is going to come with greater circumstances it's going to affect the relationship around him it's going to i feel like it could blow him up i, I think i think do you he, think he knows i don't i don't think i think he thinks that this is just one reality like this is just his life but uh -huh. in reality he is living two very separate lives two very separate realities and he's understanding now or he's he's seeing the consequences of having a foot in both worlds and having two faces and not knowing which one is is the right one so you think maybe he's coming to an understanding that it's got to be either or. You can't. I don't have... know if he. I don't know if he's coming to that understanding because I think when he was. When it's he was hard to him not this... understanding, but kind of it bothers him now even more. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, in the sense that now I think he struggles the fact that he can't have his hands on both realities anymore. Right. And, and now it's all cross. It's gonna cross over, and when it crosses over, what is he gonna do? Right. I think he I think he does have his hand in both realities. And I think he's done it well for so long, but like it's catching up to him. And I think he's he's starting to realize that. And I think that's what he's getting out of therapy um, a lot of times. I think this was a kind of a wake up moment for him. He, he's a smart guy. Like he didn't yeah. go to college, but like he could read this and understand. Like, 100 percent. Damn, this is this is very <laughs> reflective, reflective of me. Um, it, it's interesting that we didn't see a panic attack here, because I feel like when we see a moment like this with him, it really it hit him a lot. It hit him really hard, but we didn't hear the same thing with the painting and all that stuff is maybe he brings this quote into the next therapy session. I don't even know if he'll even go because now Carmela has found out. Well, the, yeah. the two the two realities were very back to back in scenes here. Right. So the, the one the first reality was when he kills the rat. Yeah. And then right before the transition happened to him, taking his daughter to college, what happened? The ducks. Oh, yeah. The ducks. Oh, shoot. Yes. Yeah, I was just going to ask you guys <laughs> yeah. about the ducks. Yeah. The duck, what do you the, think the ducks meant in that? I think it was another, you know, how we kind of talked about it, how it like symbolizes life a little bit. It was like the ducks were flying away. Like he just took a life almost. Like he took a life. The ducks are Not flying almost. away. He did take a life. He did. Yes. But he that's did. the, that's the symbolism. It's like, uh, yeah. oh, that's the symbolism that I'm trying to get at. Like uh, it almost felt like that to me it is like the ducks are, are a symbolism of the the life that he just took leaving mm -hmm. away and you saw like we didn't see like the full level of panic attack that we usually see but we saw him like staring blankly into the sky into space and like you could tell it, it was it was hitting him um and then i think this was a perfect setup after that scene to say listen bro you're <laughs> simultaneously doing a hit when you should be focusing on your daughter and bringing her to, to school schools mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. be part of this experience with her this is not going to end up the way that you think it is and you will face the consequences yeah it's basically a call back to the to the first episode where the ducks went away mm -hmm. after the ducks flying away again yep that's crazy so, yeah he's gonna <laughs> such good writing yeah he's gonna have to pay the price for not paying attention to his daughter during this part it's of her life being really selfish yeah it's it's, it's it's being really really selfish and i think his daughter is hurt because when she arrived back home carmela was like how'd it go she went she said something went straight to her room right and just walked away yeah. so well it's interesting because we like she asked him what he liked about school she asked him a bunch of questions whatever but he's not really asking like what do you want to go to school for like which one of the three do you prefer like i don't think we got any of that in here no so I think mm -hmm. that that's also showing like he's so preoccupied with his job and like what's going on with the, with the mob that he just he, he can't even focus on his family. So I thought I thought this was it's a very, very... It, it's a, yeah, cause it's a very interesting answer because 
episode because there are moments where they have these very personal conversations and the only personal conversation that they had was when she opens up about speed talking about speed and confronts him about being in the mafia then after that he's quickly turned off and is focusing on the rat there's the conversation in the car but they're not opening up to one another there no. there's nothing so uh, damn it's it's only like the negative stuff it's yeah only the stuff that it's that but you know both of them would care about this conversation like because it's something so negative or something so important like the speed thing she knew her dad was gonna have a negative reaction to that that's why she brought it up because he was she was trying to show him like man we can really have this relationship like we can really talk to each other like i did speed you know i i i know that you're gonna be okay because i know you're in the mafia and it's okay for me you know what i mean like she was trying to have that bonding but it's not just those things like you have to be to truly have a relationship with each other and in a father-daughter way or or However, in a family way, like you got to care about the little things of a yeah. person, not just the literally oh my God, you're in the mob and oh my God, you did speed once. He literally left her in the restaurant. Yeah. And just he allowed her, her to get bar. drunk underage. Yep. Yeah. It's crazy. It was bro. Just pure neglect. And we saw um, a side to Carmelo that we haven't seen yet where we saw her regret and the battle that she's going through being a significant other of someone who's in the mafia. Mm -hmm. And you brought it up. You're like, oh, we've never seen this. This is new. And I know that I think it's just an introduction to you know what she's been battling through all these years and is there something again specifically that um you maybe want to look forward to and how they address it or something that stood out to you at the beginning why you saw this i think it's very interesting how she the only person she tells is the priest obviously it's like confession it's supposed to be super confidential and he's not supposed to tell anybody else but she clearly has this some sort of attraction towards him some sort of like liking him yeah and almost like a cry for help of like this isn't the life that i want like i want to be good i want to be you know I, w I want something positive and there's so much negativity there's so much hate there's so much violence there's so much whatever going on evil i think mm -hmm. is what she called it going on in in her life and she was very much trying to like pull away from that but it's like this paradox because okay you pull away from tony what are you gonna do like have sex with a priest like you're literally yeah you're still being immoral you know what i mean i think she's coming to this realization almost of like there's there's no point almost in trying to be a good person that's what i got from it too i think she just came to an understanding that night that she had with the priest that one i don't think she'll be able to get out of this mm -hmm. but two it's going to be really hard to confront tony on anything right. i don't think she can ever open up to tony because every single time she opens up to him look look what just happened here she literally told him exactly what went down that night and he freaked out mm -hmm. right there so what if he goes up to her and be like and tells him tony uh, i can't do this anymore mm -hmm. What's, what's the reaction is going to happen, Charlie? What are you thinking about that, that dynamic? Well, I'm just thinking about the fact that she can tell him the truth and he can get mad, but she knows that he's cheating on her behind her back. He's not truthful about it, and she's not really getting mad at him, like, straight up for it. Yeah, I mean, I think she's tired. She's yeah. tired. She's tired. But she's not, like, having the reaction that Tony is, because Tony is like, how could you do this? Like, what the hell? And that kind of stuff. So... I, I think what it speaks to is just like the type of people that they are and like you see Tony when he gets anxious and he gets stressed like he explodes like he kind of yeah he, he he's like a, uh, a pressure valve like as soon as the pressure becomes too much it all has to release at once so I just think that is a, a but it's a double standard is what I'm trying to say is because she has this thing with the priest mm -hmm. and she's honest to him about it and he's like how dare you but he is literally cheating on her every single day behind her back right and he can't yeah oh no 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 there's yeah. no yeah, yeah. there's that nothing no yeah. yeah 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 but i think she knows it's like he's such a hothead he's such a whatever yes. that like if he calls her imagine if she called him out for it in front of him what would his reaction be it'd be you know it'd be dangerous it'd be yeah. he could he could get violent yeah because mm -hmm. you know you've seen we've seen the stuff that tony's capable of right i don't think we've ever seen that with his family but, we have not the point where know. it's going right now it almost feels like it could eventually lead up to that unfortunately yeah i don't know i know. think i think with his family he's almost like too sweet of a person he's like I, very it, it's again like i say dynamic a lot but it's another dynamic that is so fascinating to me because he loves his family. Yeah, he has a strong does. protection for his family. Right. But he does things to the family that hurts them. People. Like this. It's the two people. And yeah. what you can't have, you can't live, live these two lives. Yeah. And this is what's yeah. causing the stress. This is what's causing. My fear, my fear negativity. for Tony is that his actions could lead him to becoming like his uncle junior, junior in a way where he will attack family if need be for his own gain. Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, who knows? That could uh, that could that could be a potential arc. It's like the mob. You know, the deeper you get into the mob, the more you invest your time into it. The more you are called upon, the worse shit you have to do, and the worse person you become. Yeah. <sighs> hey, Ruby, you want to come up? She got tired of laying under the what do you have to table say? here. What do you think about Tony? Bad guy, good guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no, I'm shy. share, share. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh okay thank you very much <laughs> that was really loud <laughs> she just wants some attention oh ruby wow okay guys what a freaking episode this show is phenomenal it, it, it truly is because it deals with family dynamics of family and the home but also how do you balance your two realities like abe was saying it's it's a really good show and i'm having a good time watching this so thank you guys for recommending this because <laughs> true we wouldn't, <laughs> we, we wouldn't have done it without y'all really no, we wouldn't but if you liked this reaction please like this video and also subscribe if you're new and comment your thoughts we love you guys and see you soon for episode six so six. six. Uh, I'm losing track. I'm losing so track. Six. six. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. Peace. Peace. Peace.